Hello everyone, I am the Lore Explorer and this is The Outer Wilds. The Outer Wilds has a story told in quite a strange way. Really it's not told at all, it's discovered through logs and objects placed throughout a small solar system. Since you are able to go anywhere you want in the solar system, there is no order to how you find these logs. My goal here is to tell the story of the ancient Nomai so it's understandable. The problem is, the Nomai were spread throughout the solar system, constructing multiple things at once. They don't date the buildings or logs, so it's tough to pin down an exact timeline. So from here, we may bounce around a bit as we visit locations being built around the same time. Although it's not so obvious, a lot of these buildings are directly connected. This episode is when a lot of the main story beats come into play. Last episode, we learned about the time anomaly, teleportation, and that while the Nomai were separated, they both focused on the eye of the universe. The last lead we had points us to the high energy laboratory. This seems to be where the Nomai distribute the energy to the buildings on Ember Twins. It's also where the Nomai did their testing on the time anomaly. To get there, we have to hurry to Ember Twins since sand from Ash Twin is filling in the Sunless City, and the entrance to the High Energy Lab is at the bottom of the city, so it is the first thing to get blocked off. The nickname given to the binary planets really is a good one. Every time I come here, I end up waiting for one reason or another. After going through the door and following the wire, we find a giant hole filling with sand as it rains down from above and a few cactuses on the ledge of the path on the other side. If we try to pass the hole using our jetpacks, we just get pushed down by the sand, and it forces us to wait until it's full to get out. Thankfully, the power of editing lets me speed this up for you. Once we get past this cursed hole, we notice sand is filling up the pathway we are now standing on. Once again, facing an hourglass, we get a move on. Hopping a cactus, we find ourselves at the end of a path, with a small gravity well, which the Nomai used to traverse some vertical or rather long distances. After ascending, and following another short passageway, we find ourselves in the high energy lab. It's amazing the building is still working after all this time. Walking in the main room, we see the symbol the Nomai used for their teleportation pads. On the wall below it, we see a switch that must open a sort of window next to it. We also see a black hole and white hole cores on the wall, along with a few empty casings. We will come back to play with these in a minute. We came here for answers after all. And this place is a dream to an archaeologist. There are a total of four scrolls in the high energy lab. Reading the first one picks up where we left off in the last episode. The Nomai are excited to begin research on the time anomaly. To begin, they pair a set of black and white hole cores. They set up their sensors and send an object through the black hole. They unsurprisingly recreate the anomaly. Though a Nomai named Pi is unconvinced this is anything more than an equipment malfunction. To convince Pi, they decide to try to make the anomaly visible to the naked eye. In order to strengthen the effect, they decide to add more power to the warp core. Hmm. All of the power from the Sunless City should be enough energy. After warning the city so they wouldn't be left in the dark, the Nomai run the test. With extra power running to the warp core, the Nomai send an object through the black hole. We saw it! Our probe was in two places at the same time. We can't believe our own eyes. To quote one of the Nomai who confirmed this, what a beautiful day for the intersection between abstract theory and practical application. After playing a while with the black hole, we can head to the top floor to read the last two scrolls. After word of the time anomaly spreads, the Nomai on Brittle Hollow have a question for Rami and Pi, the two who discovered the time anomaly. Is it possible to extend the negative time interval of the anomaly to 22 minutes. The Nomai at the Southern Observatory don't exactly explain why they asked their question. Regardless, the answer they receive is theoretically yes, but the energy needed for a greater negative time interval 
grows exponentially as the time grows. Just to even test their theory, they will need many things. This question is what launches the events of the main story of the Outer Wilds. In order to send things back in time 22 minutes, the Nomai would have to invent something able to power the time jump. To handle all of that energy, they would have to have an advanced warp core, a technology lost to them since the crashing of Eskel's vessel. The Nomai mentioned they need a large enough space to construct this giant undertaking. They choose Ash Twins as the destination. They call it the Ash Twin Project. In order to make construction easier, the Nomai construct warp towers to each of the planets on Ash Twin. Each tower visually reflects the planet it teleports to. This allows material delivery and quick travel to Ash Twin. And this is just the first piece of the puzzle. This alone is a huge undertaking for the Nomai, but we can head to the Southern Observatory to uncover the second piece. Making sure to reset the time loop so we don't get interrupted by a supernova, we head to Brittle Hollow. If we were to go right to the Southern Observatory, we would find the door locked. To get in, we have to travel underneath the surface of Brittle Hollow. The path I take starts at the Gravity Cannon. We will probably visit this in a later series I do visiting different locations in the game. Once at the cannon, we can follow signs to get us to the observatory. To get there, we have to use gravity wells. For some reason, the Nomai had to use multiple wells to span the gaps present. And, they didn't bother to align them, so we have to use our jetpack to jump to the next one. I'm pretty sure the Nomai invented the gravity wells just to fling them directly into the black hole down below. After carefully using our jetpack to navigate the gravity wells, we are led to an ice wall with gravity crystals on them. After following them for a while, we can look down and get a great view of the black hole. Some of the gravity crystals are broken, so we have to use our jetpacks to find a way up. Ascending the final gravity well, we curse the Nomai for having desecrated gravity. The main room of the observatory is actually pretty cool. Against the far wall are two green tornadoes. In the middle looks to be a pole of some kind, though standing on the center we notice it's solid. We will read the information down here in a minute. At the top of the stairs we see a series of vertical tubes with a ball in each. Each tube has a plaque with a symbol of a planet on them. Activating the first switch, the pole below reacts, shooting a ball out, which rises to be seen from the second floor. Then a ring appears around the ball. These represent the sun in the orbit of the Ash Twins, with a symbol marking where the twins are now in their orbit. So this is not only an observatory. They are able to track the planets here as well. The Nomai had similar technology before on Ember Twin, except they used that locator for something called the Quantum Moon, a strange moon that jumps between the local planets when not observed, and sometimes disappears altogether. The Nomai are very interested in the quantum moon as well as the eye of the universe. The scroll here mentions the quantum moon locator. It also shows some of the Nomai start to question the eye. They mention they think the eye may have stopped calling out because it doesn't wish to be found. The other Nomai look at this as some sort of blasphemous statement. The only reason the Nomai came here in the first place was because they received a signal from the eye. How could it not want to be found after that? Reading the second scroll wall reveals the locator here was actually built to try to locate the eye of the universe. Knowing that, we stop reading to find the switch. It happens to be the one closest to us. Activating the switch, the ball comes to life again. The sun rises up to be in view. Then, it shrinks to the size of a marble. Giant rings start to appear in rapid succession. Not understanding what is happening, we can read the rest of the scroll. Well, that sort of explains it. The locator here was a failure. It wasn't able to pinpoint the eye's orbit, because as suggested earlier, there was no signal to find. They decide to stop searching for the eye this way, as one previous attempt already failed. The only lead the gnome I have at this point is a visual of the eye. With this in mind, Someone suggests they construct a probe to send out. 
much like the little scout we have. The Nomai admit the chances the probe would fire in the direction of the eye is extremely minuscule, but they mention a new technology found by Rami and Pi might help in this regard. Luckily, we just came from the High Energy Laboratory, where they just discovered and recreated the Time Anomaly. So the Nomai plan to use the Time Anomaly to help them find the Eye of the Universe? My head hurts already. Back down the stairs, we can read the school between the tornadoes. It tells us the Nomai had a small mishap as they were constructing the orbital probe cannon. The Nomai chose a planet called Giant's Deep because it doesn't have a moon to get in the way. Also, Giant's Deep is the furthest from the sun, providing the best angle. The green tornadoes next to us are all over Giant's Deep. The Nomai used the tornadoes to send parts of the cannon into space. On one attempt, the tornado took the part and pushed it underwater. The Nomai constructed these models to explain that phenomenon. So by now, the Nomai have a few moving pieces at play. We have the research at the High Energy Lab, the warp tower is being constructed on Ash Twin, and a new power source, combined with work on advanced warp core all happening at the same time, and the orbital probe cannon. All of this to look for the eye of the universe. It's the biggest project the Nomai here had ever taken on. For now, we may as well go check out the probe cannon. We are actually pretty familiar with the probe cannon. As we wake up at the beginning of every loop, we see the cannon launch and break apart. Maybe we can find out why it breaks. To get there, we head to Giant's Deep. We will go into more detail on the planet when we properly visit it. For now, our target is in low orbit around the planet. A wide gravity well acts as a landing platform and entrance for the cannon. Entering the main room, we get a view of the cannon barrel, or rather what's left of it. From here, we can only enter one room, but the cannon has three. The first room is the control module. The second is the launch module, while room three is the tracking module. The path to the launch module is blocked. The tracking module is just gone. Entering the control module, we see a device kind of similar to the one at the Southern Observatory. Activating the first tube, the pole shows us an, an image, and a base with the ring rises up. Each ring has no my text we can translate on it. It tells us the status of the launch and probe cannon after it launched. All we really learn from this is despite the cannon being in pieces, it is still receiving data from the probe. We also learn the glass in the launch module is broken, and the tracking module is missing, even according to the cannon. Maybe we can get into the launch module through the glass that's broken. Looking up, we notice another gravity floor. The small platform on the ground will flip us upside down and switch us to the other side. We can pick up a projection stone and plug it in. It jumps into the future a bit, right as they are about to receive the last component for the cannon. The two Nomai running the cannon are given a power limit they must not exceed. They both agree ignoring this limit gives them the best shot to find the eye. The next projection stone takes place just a bit further in the future. The Nomai are ready to launch the probe when they receive a message. The power source for the project has failed and the probe cannon will not be asked to fire. One Nomai hopes their locomotive limb is being pulled, yet the probe cannon is permanently suspended. We don't find much in the launch module. All we find is an argument between two Nomai. One argues too much power will be a bad idea, but the other Nomai notes it only has to fire once, so what's the big deal? We can see the answer to that all around us. So, as of now, the only lead we have is a failed power source. But before we visit that, I'm going to take you to the answer of the original mystery we were faced with. In the next episode, we are finally going to take our friend Hal's advice and head to Giant's Deep to find out about the statue we saw at the beginning of the game and the mask we see every time we die. Before I end the episode, I want to show you what the results would be if the Nomai messed up during their research of the Time Anomaly say if the power to go out during the experiment. This may just be an easter egg, not meant to be canon, but it is in the game. If we head back to the high energy lab, we can turn on the power. After plugging in the cores, we can pull out our scout. 
We have to be quick, so we get ready. Shooting the scout, we look down and deftly remove one of the cores from its slot. The small white and black holes both disappear, but two scouts remain. An ominous black tendril pops up as we hear a deep BOOM. Tendrils continue to show up until complete darkness takes over. The game informs us we have destroyed the fabric of space-time, and the credits roll. Since the scout exits the black hole before it enters the white hole, we can interrupt the process. So just after it leaves the black hole, yet, just before it enters the white hole, there is briefly a time where there is two probes. If we stop the process there, the two objects never revert back to one by entering the white hole. As this violates causality, we destroy space and time. And with that wonderfully confusing bit of information, this is the Lore Explorer, diving deep into the story so you don't have to. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.